I got a lot of help for this tutorial from YouTube 2000. He's the guy who made Crisis City and a whole bunch of other stage mods. And he's a great guy, so check out his stuff. Tell him that you appreciate what he does. But for this, we're going to be using Final Destination Stage and uh, Big Blue. These links will be in the uh, description. And these are just the stages that we're going to be ripping models from. Open up the Big Blue. And this is where we're going to be doing the work. Go Arc 2, Model Data 14, 3D models. And then this model right here is a platform type thing. As you can see, what we're going to be doing is actually putting this above Final Destination, so it's like Final Destination with a platform. So right click on the model, right click export, save it to your desktop or wherever. With this done, now you can go into your uh, Final Destination, open up Arc 2, and go to Model Data 2. Just because you could put in 1, but 1 is the background model data, and 2 is the actual stage model data. This will be the easiest to uh, just see all of our models at the same time. So right click on this BRRES package, uh, click on New Model, a new node will pop up in 3D models. You don't have to rename this, but if you're going to be making a stage with a whole bunch of models, it would be a good idea to do so. Once you have it renamed, right click and replace it, because right now it's an imaginary thing. It's not actually real. You have to give it a real model. Import your actual model. When you right click and preview this, it for me it shows this, and I'm not sure if it's going to show you it, but be all white, because you don't have the textures. I'm not sure. It might do either one, but as of now there are actually no textures in this file. So technically it shouldn't know what it looks like. But it might just be because I have this file open. So what we'll need to do now is add those textures. So on your final destination.pack, go all the way down to texture data and open that and open that. What you'll need to do now is just minimize final destination so it doesn't get in your way. And you'll need to open up your model that we exported and textures to open. You have to either write them down on a piece of paper, each one, like a CBO1, a CBO1A, or just keep going up and down between this and the textures. You need to export every single one of these onto your desktop, which I've already done. I'll go over how to do it, one of them. So let's say we're going to get a CBO1 and a CBO1A. Go all the way down to your texture file, which we opened up, and look for a CBO1 and a CBO1A. All of them are relatively close, so don't go looking at the very bottom or anything. Right click, export to desktop, save, I've already done so. I see but one A, export to desktop, save, overwrite. Easy stuff. Once you've done that, you should actually pause the video and do that now. It took me a while, so that's why I'm skipping over it. You'll go back into your final destination.pack, and what you'll need to do is on the texture data for final destination, you um, right click on it, import texture, and you'll have to choose each single one of them, every single one you exported. If it tells you that it already exists, like it will with T Shadow 1, don't worry about it, say that's fine. If it exists, that's good. A good way, because the names have to be exactly the same, before you actually click open and import it, right click on it, go rename, control copy, and then just now import it. Ta-da! Because when you go to the bottom, it's new node. Right click, rename, control V, done. You'll basically repeat this process until you have everything in. So see the one A, you can just do this. Okay. Bottom. Again, it takes a while. A. Okay. But once you have all of them done, you should end up with a file that looks like this, basically. I feel like a cooking show now, having multiple files ready. When 
you have them all, it will have text your data like this, all the way up the bottom, every single one. With all of these in there, you, you're finished with the textures. Close those up. And what we can do is now preview that model again if you want. It should look fine if it didn't look fine before. What we'll now need to do is create an animation. When you open up the model data, an animation for the models in this BRRES package will be in there for the Final Destination platform. And this is an anim CHR, which stands for animation character, a character animation. So when we're doing this, a good thing to do would to be right click on your model data to new character animation. It doesn't matter if you rename this or not, but again, if you have multiple animations and stuff like that, it might be a good idea. With this done, what we have to do now is right click on this preview with the model previewer and animation editor and open up everything. Maybe zoom out if you want. And what we'll be doing now is placing this in two environments. One, the imaginary environment, which doesn't exist, which is just this. And we'll do that by animating it without putting that animation in an animation. It doesn't make sense, but that's how it is. And the second way we'll be doing it is by putting it in the platform animation, which will give it a place that Brawl can recognize. So click on the main bone, which is this top one. And I already know where it's supposed to go because I've done this before. But with the models you'll be doing, you'll place them and toy with them and stuff like that. But make the translation Y55, and that will put it way up here. If you're doing a more advanced animation, go copy and then click on platform, paste, and then click off platform, and then paste. Now, both in non animation form, we're at 55, and platform five, form, we're in five, 55. With that finished, our collision data will actually show where the model is. Collision data doesn't read animations, it just reads where things are when they're placed in the imaginary space. And that was what we're doing without the animation. Right click and preview your collision data. You can full screen this. And what I've already done, because I've done this before, is um, this part of the stage was here, and this one was here. No one can tell me how to make another collision thing, and I can't figure out how to create a new one or anything, so just take a useless one, like down here, put it up here, and just position it so it works. Easy peasy. If you don't know how to do this or are confused with this whole layout, uh, check out the uh, collision editing tutorial. Make sure that the floor type, the type is floor, and you can fall through it because it's a platform, because it used to be a roof. With that finished, you can close this up, and that collision data will be stored. I would recommend going back into preview, selecting the main bone, and for the non-animated one, if you went back and set that to zero. And the reason for that is sometimes it will not like having it with a thing there, depending on the model. And the only reason you need an animation in the one that isn't animated is to see the collision. So once you set that up, you don't need it to be there anyway. With that closed, you've actually finished. And all you have to do is file, save as, stage file, uh, tutorial version, whatever you want. Uh, for mine, sometimes it goes really slow because it has to compress a lot of data. It might even say not responding. Don't worry about it. In a couple seconds, it will work. Where you put this file is on your SD card. And you go to PF, Stage, Melee, and then you put it as stagefinal.pack. When you play that in Brawl, it'll work out perfect.